I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order. We have uh, Randy, we have Victor, we have Amy and Eric, uh, and the select board. Welcome, everyone. Um, we do have a busy agenda tonight, and we also have a uh, a hard stop for our meeting with the uh, with the fire department. So. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, are the how many of the board members are planning to participate in the fire department meeting? I will. Liz, Steve. I am. Okay. Yep. No? By, by Zoom, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's Zoom. It's Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. We're gonna have to have a little break because Sarah's got to hop in her car and run over there and connect up. But um, let's get going with our uh, let's get going with our uh select board uh agenda okay, well, so yes. will that be using the same link yeah yes yeah. so i'm not going i'm not going to end the meeting i'm just going to i'm going to have i i have an impossibility i can't take minutes on a on a computer that we're using to record on zoom so i'm just going to have to take the minutes the best i can hand wise or maybe i don't know it's not a great okay. situation but you'll well, just have to bear with me my my idea is that uh, I mean we have no agenda from the from the fire department so recording in progress. I don't know what they're I don't know what they're thinking about, but my idea is there we're seven o'clock. We're going to get an update from them. We're going to meet with them and talk to them, and then we're going to get off, and they can conduct the rest of their meeting. We don't need to uh, we don't need to stay for the whole meeting, nor do we nor do we want to. I don't think. Uh, no, nor do they want us to. So. Uh, we'll see how it all goes, but that's that's my uh, that's my plan of how it's going to go. So I'm hoping I'm hoping 15 or 20 minutes will be the uh, will be it. But we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so with that, um, the first item on our agenda is a listers update on hiring Nemrick to conduct property tax appraisals, authorizing the treasurer to sign the contract action likely. So is that Amy and Eric we're going to hear from? That's it. You got us both. Okay. Thank you. So you're on. All right. Um, should I start, Eric, with it? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Did we send them a copy? We didn't. We, um, we got the copy back from uh, Nimric uh, earlier today. So contract worked out. Yep. We have a contract work out with them. Um, but the long and short is this contract was negotiated before the departure of the third lister. Um, so this will be a band-aid and then there's going to have to be additional discussions down the road on what to do about that other seat. Um, Specifically, who's going to do what duties? Whether they go into it more? You probably don't need to go into too much of it right now because they've got a big meeting, but yeah. We can talk to you more in the future, but the long and short is that you guys know I'm um, I'm short time. I'm done at least at the very end of the year at the latest. Um, and then Eric is election uh, town meeting and he's planning to rerun. And the third lister that was appointed when no one stepped up to run for Dick Alderman's former seat um, resigned on Monday. So, um, the town may be in a situation where you have no listers um, on town meeting. So that's a conversation that definitely you'll wanna, will wanna have, um, but not tonight. Um, in the meantime, let's go back to the original business. <laughs> if yes, that makes please. sense. Um, so the contract with Nimric is uh, for work to begin in October and go through June. Um, billing would be from October through June. And then of course, as with other types of contracts, it, we could extend it, the town could extend it um, as, as agreed upon. Um, it is for Nimbrick to do the inspection services. Um, the term appraisal does not, in this instance, it, we're not talking about a reappraisal of town. This is the assessor, the assessor and inspection services that the listers typically perform. So the work that Eric and I have been doing Basically, maintenance. The maintenance work, um, all the ha, all the inspections on permits, sales, and new builds, things like that that we've been doing for years. So Eric's been doing it for way longer than I have, obviously. Um, 
The rate is uh, $95 an hour. And when they have to travel, uh, the travel is $47.50 an hour. And then when they need their senior appraiser to step in, maybe on some of the more complicated commercial properties that we have in town, um, that'll be billed at 145 an hour. Um, actually, some quick thoughts on that. It's probably limited to some of the more complicated commercial stuff, possibly some of the uh, uh, larger subdivisions. Like Bowdoin. Yeah, difficult grievances. Bowdoin. Yeah. But anyway. Stuff before the state appraisal, which there shouldn't be very much of that. But. Right. So, but that, those are the rates 95 an hour, 47.50 an hour for travel. And then the senior appraiser bills at 145 an hour. We expect, based on how efficient they operate, they're, they're doing this for about 20 other towns around the state right now as well. Um, they, they're going to knock this stuff out in probably a quarter of the time that it took the two of us to do it. Um, and in the contract, we'll, we will forward you a copy of the contract um, once, we take, once we get off the call. We'll send it to Sarah uh, to, to share with you. Um, but you'll see that there's a checklist. The contract's very brief. The checklist sort of outlines what NIMRIC will do and what the town listers will do. And many there's crossover in many of those areas um, where the listers will notify NIMRIC for certain things. And again, this contract was set up with the expectation that there would be a lister available to do administrative services. An experienced um, lister. An experienced lister. <laughs> Um, so this contract um, anticipates, again, Eric, you're on through town meeting, um, but at least through that point, he or I, um, as long as I'm on, um, could be doing these things. Um, Hopefully we'll have somebody else trained by 1st of March. By 1st of March, be yeah. the ideal situation. Otherwise, we're back to square one. Yeah. And it will be difficult. Nimrick's already made it pretty clear to us that they do not want to do any of the in-house clerical, what we consider clerical type functions. They only want to operate in the field. And so this could be a real problem down the road, but at this point in time, we just don't so know. It's not that they do it too. I just want to quickly clarify, pardon me, Peter. It's not that they don't want to do it. They don't have enough people because the demand is so high for these services because so many towns are in exactly the same spot. And they're going to be getting a lot more. Okay. So inquiries for other towns. Town know? of List, a town of Chester, I think, was listed today and put up an ad today for a, for an assessor. I mean, there the ads are being posted weekly, monthly for towns looking for full time assessors. So, so it, just just to follow, I mean, that's you're right. That's 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 a conversation for another day. Unfortunately, as much as it's a as much as it's a concern. Um, Tonight we need to deal with this contract and get it in place. Um, right. So our our town attorney hasn't reviewed this at all, right? No. When we forward it to Sarah, obviously she could send it on to Rob. So it's pretty. It's it appears standard. to be a pretty standard Nimrick contract. I assume it's been you know vetted before by other town attorneys. No, I'm sure, but I I don't know. I just uh, I think I can read over contracts pretty well, but. How much? What's what's our what's our guesstimate of how much money is involved in this? Um. So I, I don't. We are at my house. We don't have the budget information in front of us handy. But um, basically, well, first of all, we don't know. We don't know exactly what the numbers will be. Um, but time wise, um, if we were to look back at the number of hours that Eric and I both build for the last few years. Uh, we would expect that to, for a lister, lister will still need to do administrative work. So there'll be some hours, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 hours a week at top for administrative oh, work. If you had somebody experienced, I would say less than that. Less than that with experience. But Three or if, four hours a week. Well, through until, until you get to, until you get to the grand list um, period, the April 1. Oh, Any, anyway. True. It's a hard. Look, look, guys, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this complicated. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a sense of how much money we think we're going to be paying Nimric to do this work. We and don't if you're saying they can do it. Well, just listen to me for a minute. So, if they can do it in 
thirty percent less time than it took you guys to do that. How many hours is that? I don't want to ballpark it because I don't have the numbers in front of me. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know off the top of my head how many hours each of us put in last year, but that would that would be one thing to look at. If we work equal hours. That's what no, I, I understand, guys. I just you're you're asking us to sign a contract when we don't know how much money it is, and we feel like we're we're or I, I at least feel like we're having the gun put to our head. But Wait a we second. could Peter, sign it tonight. Have a contract. Yes, Mary. <laughs> we're not going to sign it tonight, are we? What we're supposed to start in October? We got to sign it pretty damn soon. Well, that's what, otherwise we're going to lose them. Hi. Yeah. Yes, Steve. Peter, um, we haven't got the contract to even look at it ourselves, yeah. and neither has Rob. So if they forward the thing and Rob takes a look at it, can we sign the contract or have the contract signed for the next meeting? And then that way they can give us the information on how many hours they think and, and approximate cost of what Nimric will be. Yeah. I think we are, I, I, we are not. We are not going to do that. That is what we were just saying. We've talked about this. Eric and I have talked about this. We are not going to ballpark how much Nimric is going to bill. What we're telling you is based on our conversations with them, the fact that they are professional assessors, they will be able to accomplish this based on their own estimates in about a quarter of the amount of time that we took. Okay. Then let me, let me put it this way, team. Amy. Amy, See, can you just give us what you guys put in last year? That's what I was saying. I don't have those numbers in front of me and I no, don't. But that's to... what I'm saying. If you just provide yeah. us with that information, we can <laughs> interpolate. It's actually in the budget book. If you look in the budget book from last year, the town meeting, you can see the year before. And it was, it was that it's so far this year, we haven't done the grand list compilation. So, but you could look at last year's town meeting book and see what was spent the year prior. You could look at the year before all okay. that information is there. All right. One other, one other thing or two things that are really important that you guys need to be oh, really mindful of. Um, you're going to, the town is going to be in a situation where you, the town may not have any listers, any assessors, period. Um, come March town meeting. And you can't be in that position. And the statutes require that if you are in a position where you have one lister, you're supposed to hire an assessor. So this, I'm, we're, I'm not pushing into a corner and neither is Eric, but what we're telling you is it took a month and a half of phone calls and communication with Nimric to get to this point. We have a contract draft here for, for Rob to review. You guys, obviously your authority is not governing the scope of the work of the listers or the assessor. Your, your authority is to authorize the treasurer to sign the contract. So we'll forward it to you. It should go ahead and forward it to Rob. It's literally a page and a third, the contract, plus the checklist that goes with it is up two pages. Um, it's really brief. It's really succinct. And okay, when's, the, when's the drop dead date where we have to sign the contract, Amy? We should have signed this at the 1st of September, Peter, but we didn't get it from Nimric until today. Okay, so we're we have really been trying to get this done now because we brought it to your attention what in August sometime early early well, August no end of summer. Of drop dead date. It's just a question no. of can we get in before other towns I before we lose lose our seat right before we lose our ticket basically. Well, That's hey, here's what I would suggest, and here we go again, select board, and I'm willing to go along with a go along with the sense of the board, but if there is an issue of needing to sign this contract so that other towns don't get in ahead of us. I think we need to ask Rob to take a quick look at this and be ready to have a quick 10 minute special yeah. to agree to sign the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to agree to sign it before I can read it. And I don't think we should. So well, Peter, it, yes. isn't this, isn't this, as far as the warning was going, we were going to just authorize Dorinda to sign. Right. That's great. Right. So, right. so all we need to do is we get the contract. Rob looks at it and sends it back. Dorinda can sign the contract. That's right. right. Yes. That's no. I don't. I don't just. Dis, I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying is, and and if if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I mean, is isn't the process that 
we, the select board, should agree that it's appropriate to do this contract or is it or not? It is yeah. the lender's responsibility for this work to be done. And yeah. the, even the way the contract is written, that work, because listers are elected officials, the work falls to the listers. The select board can't oversee the work of an assessor because you comprise a number of key individuals on the appeal board, the BCA. So there has to be a division of power in the town government. It's really important that the select board isn't overseeing the assessors. Because- I'm asking to oversee the assessors. I mean, is, is, is the fact of the matter that we have no authority over signing this contract or not? If it is, then why are we even talking about it? Because the select board is who has the authority in town to bind the town. You have the, it's, it's, it's like signing a warrant. You're giving the authority to the treasurer to sign the warrant to issue the funds. Okay, thank you. They I get it. Me. So if yeah. we're going to give the authority to the treasurer to sign it, I think it's the responsibility of the board to review the contract and to have Rob review the contract. And then we say, okay, Madam Treasurer, we agree it's good. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. With you, we're we're, we're not disagreeing agree. with you. We're, we're agree, just saying. We agree with that. That should be able to be done without another meeting. Absolutely, sure. that's what we're saying. Time is of the essence, so we're bringing it to you. We got it today. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would tell you that the budget for twenty one twenty two for wages for the zoning uh, was seven thousand dollars. Not zoning, Mary. This is Lister budget. That's a different part of the budget. The zoning okay. administrator works with the planning commission. So where is the listers section? Dorinda. We've budgeted approximately $30,000 for the listers, which was equal to 655 hours for both Eric and Amy for the current year we're in. Okay. But what about um, Dave? Well, he didn't get really budgeted. Um, at okay. the time we put together the budget, we had Dick in there and he was only in for 90 hours, which amounted to about a couple thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Um, is well, there anything stopping a Amy and Eric from sending us the contract so that we can at least look at it now? Absolutely no. not. We need to get it, yes. I, I did say a couple of times now, I will forward it to you as soon as we get off the call, okay. but I can't log into the lister email while we're on zoom okay gotcha. that's fine I'll forward it to sarah. sarah if you would if you would just forward it to rob and tell him we need him to take a quick look at it and tell us he thinks it's okay you can spare yourselves i think you can say that you uh, provisionally authorized dorinda right. to uh to sign the contract provided exactly. that rob, that doesn't find any glaring errors required especially okay. that way we get this done yeah. and over with that okay. is my so right. would somebody make that motion steve i just did peter Okay, I'll was somebody second, second that motion? I'll second it. Thank you, Mary. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, good deal. Okay, Thank thanks. You. We so, will, we'll, wait, uh, sorry, before you go, Amy, did you say that you had a ballpark of how much percentage of what had been budgeted, or do you say that was actually all of what was budgeted? For a a they said it would be a quarter of the uh, time. What are the hours, but it's a much quarter higher rate. But they're okay, really well, I did a quick calculation of 655 hours divided by four multiplied by 95, and I got about a little under $10,000. Right. Okay. One other really quick, just to kind of remind you guys, we, we, we're not going to be buying that software that we last minute were told we were going to need, and then turns out we shouldn't buy it right away. So there are also places in the budget for this year for the listers where there is money budgeted that is not going to be spent for those purposes, just so that you are reminded of that as well. Um, everything to do with our work has been a complete whirlwind and frustrating and not nothing to do with the town. It has everything to do with the state. Right. So, Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks Amy. Thank and you, uh, listeners. Yep. Thanks, right. y'all. We'll see you around and we'll send that right away, Sarah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Wow. That was.
was 655 hours each, Mary, just in case. I don't know oh, if you got that. Right. It wasn't and it total. Would be twice as much, so it would be like 20000 but it's still in the ballpark of what we had put into the budget. In wages, we had put in 30000 but you've yeah. already, you've, you're already six months. By the time this happens, you're going to be four months into the budget. So, well, I think we just put it in order of magnitude. Yeah. And yeah. so, so it's not going to be like a hundred thousand dollars. In other words, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Based, based on those numbers, you are looking at like $31,000 though. If it's 25% of those numbers that Dorinda just said at $95 an hour. It's just over $31,000. Yeah, and that's not counting the, what they've done for six months. So well, that's it's just, uh, you know. Super tight. There's no choice. No, there's no choice. But they're not buying the software, so there's some money there, although I don't know how much that right. was. Well, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be buying the software next year. So get ready. Anyway, like everything else we seem to do, the expenses spiral on and on, but uh, we're already behind schedule. So um, signing a warning for the October 19th site visits and public hearing are in down breeding class four section of Dolan Road action likely. This and is the cool. hypothesis is that we have to, not hypothesis, but the procedure is that we have to actually meet at the road. So right. what I'm suggesting is hopefully we can do that at 4.30. If we can't do it till five, we'll have to do it at five and then no, you can do it whenever you want. It's uh, I left the motion that I sent you, the warning that with that time blank, if you guys can figure out right. a time or settle on a time. Therefore, the select board would meet at Dolan Road at blank PM on Tuesday, October 19th. Right. To be. So if you guys pick a time, we can we can do that. If you want to pick at four, I, I don't know. Whatever works. I mean, I know everybody's got crazy schedules, so. Well, I'm, I'm fine with 4.30. Yeah, Are we got others who can do it at four thirty, Phil. Yeah, I'm at, at the working woman. Right. Um, that's Liz. fine, but we'll probably be there for a half an hour, and then we have to get back to our computers. Well, I'm hoping we're going to be there fifteen minutes. I don't think we need to be half an hour. I know, but, but then we still have to drive back. Oh no! By the time we get back to wherever we're going, yeah, we're going to lose half an hour. So sure. I wonder if you we need to do it at four is my point. I would hope not, just because it's I'm I I can do whatever anybody else wants to do, but you're a the four fifteen. How about I just don't think it's enough time for everybody to get back for the five o'clock meeting. Okay. I agree. I can't get I can't get from Dolan Road to yeah. you that okay. time so unless you guys you want to start everybody? The, four. I see four. I'm fine. Yeah, four is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, four then. Okay. We're all good for four. Talk about class four. And did you guys read this? That that notice seems fine to you. Eight hundred thirty-two yes. foot section yes. of Dillon Road. We've already Shane measured it, so we're good to yep. go. I think. Okay. We can come in and sign this. You can, along with the orders that are waiting for you and right. the personnel policy and all sorts of yummy things. Okay, I will be in tomorrow morning. Okay, I can come in tomorrow as well. What time? What time will you be there, Sarah, in the morning? Nine a.m. Okay, well, I'll be there probably between nine thirty and ten tomorrow. You guys want to vote on this, and then we can. Then yes, we, can... we need to vote. I'll make Move approval of the motion on Dolan Road for the for the site visit on October nineteenth at four o'clock. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, Bill, already the orders Whoops. today. Did Phil sign the orders today? I did. Mary, yeah, can we, can we finish the vote first, please? Mary? I'm sorry? We need to finish the vote. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to do, have some kind of reasonable order here. So all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now, Mary. No, I just I just wanted to know whether or not if everybody else is stopping in, whether I need to. I drove right by there and I completely forgot to stop in. I'll be there in the morning. And Peter okay, and I'm never there. So if somebody needs me to be there, they have to ask. Peter's no, be there. there. Bill has already done it. So that's I've already been in. Yeah, so I don't need to do it either. 
No. Okay, correcting, oh. moving right along, correcting the uh, town personnel policy action likely. Um, so these are the corrections we discussed uh, right. last, at right. our last meeting. It's That's just correct. ratifying what we had done earlier. Right. So are you moving, Steve, to ratify our actions? I today? am. I'm seconding it. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and once we do that, Sarah, maybe you've already done it, but once we do that, could you send us all out in each an updated, corrected, whatever we call it? Yes. Well, you have to sign that too. When you, after you're done signing it tomorrow, uh, I will send it out to you okay. and to the road crew. No, okay. perfect. Thank you. Um, and please, move to accept, sure, please move to accept the David, David's resignation. Wait a minute. Victor, just hold on a second, Mary. Would you just make sure that the road crew knows that that is a correction of the previously approved changes to the personnel policy. They are always very suspicious that we are taking something away or changing something. Yes, I can do that. <clears throat> okay, I'd appreciate it, thank we, we you. We chatted, but are you, are we gonna, is the town gonna re, uh, require them to sign that again? Or is it just gonna be a correction? <laughs> What's the harm in having him sign it? What's that? What's the harm in having him sign that? Oh, well, that kind of winds them up, but uh, other than that, nothing, I guess. <laughs> the bottom line is, unfortunately, they should probably sign it. So they've signed the correct copy of the okay. pers personnel policy. If it becomes a huge issue, then we'll have to figure out what to do. But all we're trying to do is make sure that our personnel policy says what we all thought it said and what we told the road crew previously that it said so right yeah in all fairness in all, fa in all fairness peter they 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 really want the same thing it's just no i know they do it's i know they do Victor. it's right. just been a frustrating process for them and it's been a frustrating process for us so okay. let's let's try and bring it to a happy conclusion and all of us get on with our lives very good what's what we'll do okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, accepting the resignation of Dave Smith from the following post. Lister, delinquent tax collector, and assistant town clerk action likely. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion that we accept the letter of resignation. Okay, you seconded it, Mary? Yeah. Okay. I beat <laughs> Okay, all in favor of the uh, motion accepting Dave Smith's resignations, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I do have a question. What if we didn't accept it? <laughs> well, he's, you know. I think he's still gone. He's, yeah. he's gone anyway. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little, uh, I mean, it's a discussion for another day, but I'm a little, Miffed. I'm not really yeah. upset, but I'm a little miffed that he would just walk out and say, right. I'm done. It isn't like he's starting another job. It isn't like he's doing anything. And it's just one more issue that we're trying to struggle and deal with. And would two weeks make a big difference? Probably not, but at least we'd have a chance to try and do something. Whereas right. now we're just yeah. thrown right in the soup. Yeah. So, so he, I thought, anyway, I thought it is what it is. I thought he quit because he had another job. You're saying he doesn't have another job? My understanding is he does not have another job. He's oh, looking sorry. for full-time work. Gotcha. Is correct, Sarah? Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to add in the minutes that uh, the board will advertise and post notices for uh, the, the vacancies. You have to do that within 10 days of accepting uh, a resignation of an elected position to consider nominations to be appointed to, those, to fulfill those vacancies. Right. That was part of Steve's motion, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because that's what I thought I was seconding. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, could you refresh my memory? You are able to um, hire an assistant 
town clerk, and that's not a uh, appointed position. I I can hire right. an assistant town clerk. I can hire four assistant town clerks. So that's not really something that has to be part of that whole process. But if it's an elected position, then someone steps down from it. You have to post a notice within 10 days after the, the select board has been notified and accepted the resignation so that people can submit applications or their requests to be considered to be nominated by the board to those two positions. And those two positions are collector of delinquent taxes and listener. Okay. All right. Yep. And and the truth of the matter is you would hire the assistant clerk and Dorinda would hire the bookkeeper. So it's really the yep. two of you tag teaming trying to hire this full time. Right. Person. You guys just have to uh, approve the money. Right. 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 And we have put the word out everywhere we can think of, right? I can't think of some place where I haven't put the word out. Perfect. Did you put it on all the um, the uh, local front porch forums in addition to Middlesex? I did not put it on the local front porch forums in addition to Middlesex, but I did call every single town clerk in the, in the entire area. I put it on Job Link. I talked to the Department of Labor. I put it on Craigslist. I mean, I've just been, uh, that's all I've been doing for this week is just posting job that is, I'm pulling people aside. I may have a candidate for, I may have a really good candidate um, just by, be, she just ran after me at the farmer, at the market and said mm -hmm. she was interested. So let's hope, let's fingers crossed, please contact. Well, just, you know. just a thought because sometimes you have somebody in one of those towns yeah. reading front porch forum who's not talking to the town clerk. I will, I will get it out there. I just, it's been, it's just, I have to find someone to post it for me. And a lot of the town, like Callis posted for me. Um, so I have, I just haven't gotten to Barry into Montpelier, but I will get that by that. Well, by I'm the even here in East Montpelier and, you know. Yeah, those. I know. But also people can read it from other towns. They can read our postings from other towns and they're shareable. So. Okay. We're getting the word out. That's the important thing. Yes. Steve has a question. Yes, Steve. My question is, it's not related to hiring that, but do we still have a an advertisement for a road? I also did, Steve, I also did the highway department at the same time. Great. So Thank I you. did, I did, uh, and we had to get approved by the state of Vermont. So that took 24 hours to do the job link thing that yep. I did that and everywhere and also Craigslist. And we did get an application today for uh, the road crew, but Perfect. I do not want to say that person's name. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. And maybe, maybe that person who said they were going to apply when Vic was on the morning um, uh, going to the dump section. Well, that's the other thing. I also talked to WDEV. So Rick Tile's going to have me on on Monday talking about actually this particular situation, um, trying to find um, qualified people to uh, during a time of the pandemic when nobody, nobody seems to be willing to work. And uh, I've also talked to WDEV about doing some advertising spots. It will cost for a municipality, you can get um, 30 second spots. So you can get three 30 second spots for the price of two. And the other thing I think is interesting is that according to their advertising person, she said, uh, advertise at the beginning of the week because everyone hates their job at the beginning of the week, not so much in the middle and the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Sarah, you're up on top of this. Thank you for your diligence. Well, we're doing everything we can. I know Dorinda's doing stuff too. We're just, we, we've really spent a lot of time working on it. We just hope it works out. Well, thank you, Dorinda, as well. Gosh, that's great. Yeah. I don't know if Dorinda has any sound. Yeah, it's back. I had to switch <laughs> computers three times. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Computer updates. Okay, so we're back. We're back a little bit ahead of schedule, so that's good. So uh, Susan Rickstead and Doug Ludbart sending us sent us a letter requesting that no overnight parking signs be installed yeah. behind town hall, and there's a question of whether that would require a townwide ordinance in order to be enforceable action possible. Um, I'm not aware. I understand they had a problem one weekend or one evening or, or whatever, but this, this has not been an ongoing problem, has it, Sarah? Uh, no. So a couple of things. Uh, when I did talk to the Vermont State Police and they did some, they had to do, they had to research this. And the bottom line is for the state police to either ticket somebody or have somebody towed, we definitely need an ordinance. And that raises questions like, 
Well, if you say, are you going to be specific or are you going to say all of town property? Does that apply to the town forest? Does that apply to the town's right of way? That type of stuff. So there's that. Um, there seems to be a trend from what I understand, because I've been talking to other town clerks about this who are also having the same problem. We're getting a lot of people in RVs who are crossing the country who don't want to stay at Walmart. And somehow the word's gotten out that you can stay for free behind town halls or in public prop property. So that is where we are. Um, the state police guy, this uh, officer I talked today from Middlesex Barracks said, if you wanted to, you could put up uh, no parking from dusk till dawn signs, if we can find them. Uh, it just might be a deterrent, but this, just know that the state police won't have any authority to come and pull somebody away unless they have a, um, yeah. I think that we should do that informal one and see if that does the trick. Then we don't have to deal with all the legal issues. Yeah. Well, so so here's my here's my only concern, and I think we're looking for a solution to a problem which doesn't exist based on based on one event. And I'm also aware over the years, and I don't know who all it is, but they're probably village residents who park in the town hall during snowstorms because it's plowed and their driveways may not be plowed or who knows why they do it. But in the winter time, when I go skiing early in the morning, there are frequently, uh, there are frequently cars parked there. And to the best of my knowledge, that's never been an issue or a problem other than, you know, when our guys come to plow, but typically they don't plow the town hall parking lot until later in the day because they're busy doing the, you know, the, the main routes in town and, and making way for the school buses. So I just, I just want to be sure we're not creating more of a problem than we're solving. I'm not aware that we have had anybody in a, in a motor home or RV or tent or anything uh, in, our, in our town hall parking lot or town garage or school parking lot or anywhere. I just, I just the, the, if we're going to do anything, I, I certainly would favor the informal approach, even though it's unenforceable and hope that hope that does the trick. But, you know, at the same time, I kind of hate that because that's it's kind of a waste. I'd rather have us spend our time working on our, our highway ordinance and our and our speed ordinance, which we now know is unenforceable because it desperately needs to be updated rather than rather than put our work and time and effort into creating a parking ordinance. But I feel like if, if what Sarah's saying is true, there may be more people doing that. And if it's from dusk to dawn, the people who are parking there because of snowstorms, they would just have to move when it gets light out. That's all. Uh, all I'm just thinking is, well, they don't ask a lot of us, and we. I just thought we should be good neighbors. That's all. Peter? Yes. Um, Peter. What, why couldn't we just put up a couple of signs and it's not going to cost very much to just say uh, no overnight RV parking? Just leave it at that. And well, that, isn't what, that isn't what our neighbors want, though. They want no parking. No, they want no overnight parking. I mean, they can't right. say no parking at Town Hall. We have to have parking at Town Hall. Right. I'm just saying no overnight, no RV parking overnight parking or whatever or no overnight camping or something yeah something some little simple verbiage two signs one on each side it's not going to cost very much and just try it and hope that works yeah i think that's a good idea steve so if so, so again let me just circle back and say so we're talking about putting these signs up beside the town hall and behind the town hall but not in front of the town hall I just think it's our residents who are using that parking in the wintertime. And I'm not aware that it's ever been a problem. So, but, but if we use RV, then, you know, they, right. in the wintertime, they're not parking their RVs out there. No, but the point is, I mean, Jesus, what they would, the, the issue they had was a car, I believe, not a, not an RV. Was it an RV? I think it was some sort of, uh, See an RV, some sort of it thing. Was an RV. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then I'm fine. I'm fine with the RV then. Okay. Why not just revisit if it becomes an issue? If it's a one and done, okay. I, I agree with Peter. I think I think we're making a bigger deal out of something that's not an issue. 
um, and to expend the, the time and the resources on trying to deal with stuff that's a non-issue um, can always revisit it at another point in time. I'd much rather see us spend time and, and financial resources on making something that's enforceable if it's an actual issue. Yeah. So what say you, what say you, Borg? I like no signs. these recommendation. I don't see why we shouldn't try and be good neighbors. They haven't really asked a lot of us. Are you making I'm a fine with putting up a sign if it's not going to cost us a lot of money and not take up a lot of time. But I also agree with Randy. I, if it's one time that this happened, I would just say, you know, let's just wait and see. And we're willing to do something if this becomes a pattern. Peter? Yes. Um, I have used that and some of my family have used that. Like if you're going to go, you park down there, like if there, uh, it's a, uh, and just leave your car and sometimes uh, they don't get back. And so it's there overnight. And I mean, where our, any intention wasn't to leave it overnight, but, but we did. Well, Steve says it's only RVs. So, I mean. How about a motion? Oh, that, I make that motion. <clears throat> Reese, that a motion, please, Mary. We put up a couple or three signs saying no RV parking overnight around the town hall area. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Yeah, I second it. Okay. All in favor of the motion, which is to put up two or three signs which say no overnight RV parking with the understanding that we can't enforce it. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so how do we get these signs? Who makes the signs? Et cetera, et cetera. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Shane who might have some contacts. I'll figure it out. Okay. okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um, reviewing and possibly approving and signing a memorandum of understanding RE public access to proposed overlooks to be constructed behind planetary matters action likely. Um, Sandy did send us, does she wanna be part of the meeting when we do? Oh, there she is. She's Perfect here. Timing, Sandy, welcome. Um, uh, I did get the, uh, I did get the email and I presume all of you did with the, uh, with the map and the language. I, I read it over, it looked pretty straightforward to me. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any comments or Suggestions. You're recommending approval, Sandy. Correct. Yes, as I as I said in the email, I worked on this with our town attorney Rob Halpert, as well as with um, Russ Bennett at Planetary Matters, um, and it's the public access agreement, which is a key piece of the overall uh, grant for the overlooks. That the, um, Planetary Matters will build the overlooks, and the town will have a public access um, to those overlooks. I, uh, I read it over too, and uh, it's really basically an easement plus, um, but I had one concern about the last paragraph in section three use. It says they can close the right of way if they're doing construction. And mm -hmm. what I was concerned about is construction of what? Is it like, can they close it if they're doing construction of a building or is it just if they're doing construction of the overlooks? or if they're improving the right of way, if they're gonna put gravel down. I mean, I just wasn't clear about the limits of the construction, reconstruction or repair. That's all. That may, that may not be as clear as, as it could be. My understanding is that it was you know, during construction or if they're moving the overlooks or if they're doing some other construction on the property, that it would be a... Um, you know, closed for the period of time that the construction is happening. So any construction on the property. As, as written now, I think that that's how it would be interpreted. Yeah, I do too. I think it could be any construction. And so if, if the town's happy, if they're okay with that, then I'm not going to complain. I just thought it was, if it was only well, to be limited, then we should limit it. Yeah. 
So is this owned I, by Planetary Matters? All of this, or yes, this is all property reason? that's owned by Planetary Matters. So, like, if someone were to fall and die, that's under their insurance. Yes, though there is a is a very clear um, <laughs> statute that says unless you're charging somebody for the use, you there's no liability. Right. I see, and that's that's referenced in the yeah in the contract. Um, when I uh, when I looked at the map, which was very helpful, Sandy, when you when you sent that along, because I had no idea where this was. It it basically goes as you as you look at the red hen. It is to the left of the red hen, right down there, property line. Yes, it actually goes right along that. Well, they own both sides of that. They own two properties they, there. They so own both. They own both sides of that. There's a there's a a drainage, I, you know, call it a stream is pushing it. It's the drainage from the road goes there. So it's a fairly significant gully. There's actually an old road um, that went that went down there. They've cleared some of that already. But so it's um, within the setback of one of their properties, uh, but they own the adjacent property as well. But all I'm all my only point was and I I read that I read that language too, Mary. But I thought, you know, it's very unlikely that they're going to be constructing something which is right there or in that way. Is you know, might they do something to maintain that? Yes, but I don't. I mean, who knows? They're 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 giving us this. I think we have to cooperate with them as they improve and work on their land. So, well, I I'm just uh, I'm not against it. I just wanted to clarify, you know well, how whether we should limit it or not. No, no that's fine. And it, See, well, yeah, yeah, my comment is at the very start of this access right there, there's, they have a 10 foot wide right of way. And if they're working on their property, nothing to do with the access out there, but if they're working on their, their property, the driveway or that building for construction, I could see that, but it says as soon as the construction is done, then it would go back. So. I just wanted to throw that well, out. The other, the other reality is the intent of this agreement is to protect access to the grant funded improvements that are being made. And the reality of this, as I look at it, is let, let's say they have to close off a portion of that right away for some period of time. People are just going to walk around it and go on back there. I mean, they're not going to have somebody out, out there telling them they can't can't walk behind the building and walk over there. People walk all over that property now. So I don't see it as a big deal. And uh, no. I, I would Everybody recommend for me that, we, uh, that we approve it. So just one more quick question. Yes. Uh, this is Liz. So the also there's, is there a broader intent that this path, <coughs> excuse me, this path that goes to the overlook will also get extended possibly to say, you know, the fire station or something like that. Is that, this is the same thing that this, we're talking about? I mean, about, right? there, there are many people in town who hope that that could happen. Um, we're a long way from that actually happening. No, yeah, I know. Um, but my question is, you know, it's saying things like there's, there's all these things prohibited, like picnicking and skis and snowshoes. Like, would that be, this could potentially be changed if, the event in the event that there were a larger path is that correct yes my my understanding this is this is the starting point and given that these overlooks are on a fair on a fairly steep area um didn't want to have people riding a bike down there that that could could be dangerous but the you know it would be the own the owners it would be the planetary matters folks it's their property that they would have some say over what's you know, who, what sort of activities are going to be allowed. Um, it could be expanded going, um, it could be expanded in the future if a more significant path were to, okay. um, were to, were to develop. And in, in this regard, it's similar. We, we borrowed some language from, I think it's the Mad River path where similarly, the, you know, the owners retain the ability to move a path. They just, you know, they allow public access on their path. But since you know, the public is using somebody else's land. It's um, recognized mm -hmm. that it's the landowner that gets to have the say over what sort of uses can be on their land. Okay, thanks. 
Anything else, anyone? Someone willing to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion that we uh, approve approve that memorandum of understanding for the public access. I'll okay. second it. Whoop. I think Bill. I'll second it. Pick one. I <laughs> Bill has been uh, trying to move a motion or second it for a while. <laughs> I know. You've been cutting me off, Mary. You just you too I quick. know. That's why I just shut up this time. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. So uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You want to, uh, Peter, it only requires one signature. I assume that the board doesn't need to designate you as a signatory since you're the chair, but yeah, I'm going to throw that question to you. No, I'm fine. As long as everybody else is fine, I'll be down in the morning. Okay. It's going to be waiting for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you for all your work on this, Sandy. I think I think this is going to be a nice thing. I, I think it'll I think it'll be great. It'll be really nice. Um, just you know, while while I have you, and it's still before six o'clock. This is you know, just uh, I'll flag these issues. Um, coming your way is the new enhanced energy plan. The planning commission will have a hearing on that first, but then it will be going to you. We talked about this at our. Um, last meeting when we met in July. And we also forwarded, um, the Planning Commission nominated uh, Assistant Zoning Administrator of Sarah Berger. So I think that should, the, the actual appointment would need to be done by the select board. So you could take that up at some point in the, in the future as well. Yeah, Sandy, we tonight, so we can't do it. No, no it's not can't. noticed for tonight, but. Yeah. Sandy, aren't you, are, are you, is the Planning Commission still scheduled to speak to the board? I think I've got you down for the 5th of October. Yes, for the 5th of October, if that still works, we'll give you an update on other things that we're doing. And Sandy, we are straight finally on that contract, right? Thank you. I heard that you got it. You signed it. That just to, to well, let the other. Uh, you know, I, get, I get so much stuff. I didn't realize that was what they were talking about because I knew I'd signed that one thing. Anyway. Okay. I'm sorry it yeah. turned into such a kerfuggle. It's my fault for not paying better attention to what I was doing. I apologize. And that but was just an, extent, an extension of the grant agreement so that we have until the end of September to complete the work. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks. Treasurer's report. Dorinda. Um, don't have a lot to report. I did send you an updated um, status, budget status. It had a lot more in it than just the, the budget itself. But um, a couple areas of concern, which is, um, I mean, there's some like legal fees are over double what have been budgeted. Um, I got in a significant amount of highway bills this week that were for last year's budget, but did not receive them until just recently. Um, so that's going to affect this year's budget. Um, so there's just, you know, as you go down through it, you'll see there's just a few areas of concern that, you know, have got that are over budget or in certainly several areas that are already over where we really should be at for right now. Um, also uh, delinquent notices for late payments of taxes. Those will be run next week uh, without the Delinquent tax collector, whose is their responsibility? I will send those out. Thank you. Thank you. How, are there a lot this year? A lot more than normal, or about the same, or do you know yet? I haven't really looked at it. The last time I got a report was it was probably a couple pages long, so maybe sixty to a hundred. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. But those are late payments, so it could be people who missed their August 20th payment. Um, but we have another one coming up in November, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Okay. 
Mike, do you want to, did you want to bring up that thing that you sent us about the step increases or you're not doing that as treasurer? I'm not doing that as a treasurer. Oh. That's a, that's a discussion for the board. That was just information that I found and offered up that maybe it's a way to look at how to, you know, move forward on this whole process. I think that, you know, you are going to need to very soon set what you anticipate for uh, at least a range of pay for um, both these positions, um, the one that Sarah and I are looking for and the highway position, um, because that's, you know, at least if we have a range, we would have something for an initial interview. Um, but, and, you know, so I, with that, along with what people are currently getting paid, I think, you know, um, you know, you need to look at everything. I don't think you can just look at the one position you're trying to fill and pull a number out of the hat. No, oh, I agree. Yeah, thank I mean, you. As part of our, as part of our, uh, I mean, we we typically do not during budget time spend a lot of time. You know, we 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 talk about what the overall raise should be, but we don't we don't jigger and figure and really look at what people are getting paid and whether we need to make adjustments or not. And I think this is going to be a year where we, we really need to pay attention to that and improve our, improve our practice of how we, uh, of how we do that. Yeah, uh, I, think, I, I feel like, I feel like we've, we've learned our lesson and uh, we just cannot be hiring people without paying attention to what everybody else makes. And I'm not saying we didn't pay some attention, but maybe we didn't pay enough attention. Um, I ran some rough numbers just using just real quick numbers for um, the assistant treasurer, uh, assistant uh, clerk and bookkeeper and with benefits and all attached in, which is something that, you know, was never affecting those two positions before. So that's another thing you'll have to consider because it does add probably, you know, another $17,000 to the number. Yep. Yep. Well, I know, I know Washington Electric Co-op and we had all the benefits in it. We have 401ks and a pension plan. It's another 40% of out of, out of pocket to add all the benefits on. So I, if you've done yours, done that as a percentage, but maybe you can't because you don't know what we're going to offer the to pay. Right. And, uh, you know, I just took in the spreadsheet that I use when I put together the budget is what I just, I used that and just plugged in an hourly rate and extended it over guessing that the person might have a single health insurance plan. They might have, you know, you don't know what it's going to be until you, you know, get the person hired. Right. Right. I mean, we have a we have a better idea, at least at the current pay scale, of what the road crew person would make. But this new position is a going to be a work in progress. Right. And I think you know, I don't know if you want to look at it as to are we going to think of the position being um, a fifty fifty, or is it going to be, you know, a thirty. A 3366 position in the past, Dave was working like, I don't know, three partial days a week. Um, and the accounting department was working like a day and a half a week. But I don't know if, uh, you know, if it, that'll all change. Um, it's certainly going to, you're not going to be able to track it separate. Right. So it's going to have to be just a, you know, but you're talking from, a low of uh, $21 and we were paying Mark like 25. So, yeah. You know. right. Yeah. But isn't there like that, those positions, I mean, they're going to be intermingled every day. Every day. Yeah. Right. It's just so. like, it's just like, it's just like Sarah's, Sarah's position now where she's, you know, where she's town clerk one minute and she's select board assistant the other minute. So, 
What Dorinda is just saying is we're going to have to say, okay, this is the rate of pay for the combined position. And we're, we're just from an accounting point of view saying it's 60, 40 or whatever the percentage is. Right. So when you figure what those positions are worth, because certainly, you know, in what I looked up, I tried to do some search on the internet today and, you know, bookkeepers are paid in this range and they didn't list an assistant clerk, but I could find a range of a clerk. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's just figuring out what you want to do. Right. Well, the important thing and the overarching thing for me is to try and find the best person we can find. And then we've got to, got to backfill all these other pieces. It's not, very productive. I mean, it's good to think about all this stuff. I agree. But until we have somebody and we know what, what we're going to have to pay them to hire them, it's kind of a, it's kind of a moot point at the moment, I think. And whether we say. I kind of disagree in that to one respect that, you know, you can't hold an intelligent conversation with somebody unless you can say the first question I've been asked twice already is what does it pay? And, you know, you've got to have a range, you know, is it going to be between 20 and 30? Is it going to be between five and 10? You know, whatever. It's you've got to just give yeah, some right. kind of door. Right. So what would you recommend? I don't I, I don't know if it's my recommendation or not. I mean, I think, again, it goes back to without you seriously looking at what other people are making because I can tell you right now that if you go out there and you know offer a position like this to somebody for thirty dollars, I can tell you there's a person sitting right in front of us that probably isn't gonna be happy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So but by the same so I, by the same token. Look, 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 look. It's it's one of these chicken and the egg conversations. We've got the same issue potentially with a road crew. We have to look at what our current rates of pay are, how they match up. We can't hire, we can't hire new people and pay them five or six dollars an hour more than we're paying our current people. It just doesn't work. Right. So, so but there's gotta be we... some kind of a there's gotta be some kind of a of a of a compromise and you know we we need to figure that out. But certainly you're right about that, Dorinda, no question. So I think it, the conversation needs to happen sooner than later. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm happy to work with Dorinda and with Sarah if, if she wants to and do some research and what people are paying in different towns and stuff like that. And that, then That would be great. I think, you know, the, the hard part about this is I think it's likely... I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's it's likely that the candidate we're going to get is not going to be somebody who is currently working for another town. But we don't know. I know, but, but what I'm saying the more information is, we have. I mean, Dorinda, Dorinda's done some work looking at what uh, looking what at what bookkeepers make. I can I can make some calls and find out what's going on in the in the business world these days in that regard. I mean, we can we can do our uh, we can do our homework. But and check at uh, Capstone too. I know that we're hiring like an accounts payable person administrator for 18 an hour. Right. And I have that's to tell less you, than a bookkeeper. But you know, I, I did find where, you know, bookkeepers are down in the lower 20s. They're not, you know, we were 25, which was a very attractive offer. And, um, that was with no benefits, too. And that was with no benefits. That's right. The person who approached me today said um, she said the appeal for her about this job, she is currently employed. She's not working for another town. And you're right. We're not going to get it from other towns. But I think what Mary was saying, she just wanted to figure out how much other towns pay for bookkeepers like that. And it's really kind of hard to pull them apart because a lot of times people are assistant treasurers or treasurers and they have multiple duties, including assistant town clerk. It's not a really unusual combination. So you can get somebody who's assistant treasurer or assistant treasurer, assistant town clerk, collector of delinquent taxes, E911 coordinator. I mean, that's how towns do that. And which is what I'm going to also suggest that this person do take on some other responsibilities, such as being an E911 coordinator. 
Um, but the person who I talked to today who was interested in this job, who has a who has bookkeeping, although she says not to the degree that Dorinda has in the ad. So I think some people might be intimidated by the ad, but you know, that's what you want. Um, she said this traction for her is a decrease in stress and uh, working closer to home. So, I mean, I think those are things we have to pitch to people. It's like, we, you know, we won't be able to work remotely because we just really can't do remote in this job, but you can say, well, if you need to come in on a Saturday and do bookkeeping without anybody around, you could do a book Saturday. Those are that I think is going to be the attractive part of this job. Eric, can you remind me, um, did we decide that we, or maybe we didn't decide, um, it, that it's probably not best practice that the bookkeeper is also the treasurer, but it's not against regulation for them to be both? It's not. It's and fine. so did we decide on that? The treasurer has to be a resident of our town, though. Right. Right. And was this person not a resident of our town, Sarah? This person I talked to? Yeah, she it's she's got a funny situation. She lives with somebody in this town, but she is actually a resident of a different town. Well, does an assistant treasurer have to be the person, but the clerk doesn't have to live in town. The town clerk has to live in if the elected town, if you're elected, you have to be a voter in this town. But, but the, if you're an assistant clerk or assistant treasurer, you do not have to be a resident. You do not. It's only if you're elected. That's the, that's where it, the key is. This position isn't asking for an assistant treasurer, is it? No. 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 Okay. Thank you. So, aye, aye, aye. I mean, after all that, and we believe it or not, we do have, for once, we have a little time, uh, unless, unless Victor has a 45-minute report for us. Do we want to, uh, do we want to discuss what the pay raise, what the pay range should be or could be? Why not? Yeah, why not? But we may not have enough information. Yeah. Well, well, we can. All we're going to all we're going to do is is get to a starting place. I mean, based based on what I've heard, um, I think we're in the in the low twenties to a to a max of the mid twenties per hour with benefits. Yeah. I agree. Right. I don't think we, I don't think we can stretch any more than that. We're gonna have we're gonna have problems left, right, and center if we do. I have well, I mean, the, but the thing is, really if there, can I speak? Um, if if this person is doing other jobs, are we? How does it work? They they they're not getting one hourly rate at this job and one hour, or are they? No, Do they, no. no. We've got to pick no. a. You have to. Pick you have a rate to. Which, We've got to pick a rate which reflects the hours that they work. So if if the bookkeeping position is a higher paid position and the assistant town clerk would be a lower position and they're 50-50, you just say, okay, you're in, you split the difference in the middle. And you know, as whatever the percentage is, you have to agree on one rate of pay. Otherwise it's just chaos. Right. Okay. And the last thing you want to do is make somebody turn in a time card every week and say, this is how much time I spent being assistant town clerk. And this is how much time I spent right. being bookkeeper. It doesn't work. It's a night, it's a night, it's an administrative nightmare. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. So then we also need to come up with the salaries of all these other things before we can present this person a number. If in fact we, someone, we get applications, we need to kind of know and I think that's what Mary was saying. She would work with maybe Sarah and Dorinda to figure out the timing because you're going to have to figure out, I assume we'll charge the $20 an hour like everybody else is getting for the other jobs, right? Yeah. If they're doing other things. Isn't it sort of this flat $20 rate we've been giving everybody? Well, it's gone up since then. So, but except with the um, delinquent tax collector, um, they were making more because... I think Dave came in at um, a rate that I was making at the time or something. Um, so that was the only one that seems to be higher than normal. Um, but the, I'm talking, we're not talking about the delinquent tax collector now, though. Well, yep. no, but I'm just she's but you're talking about these other positions, you said, right, right. Liz? Yeah, like if we're hodgepodging together all these jobs, we need to know exactly how much we're paying for the other positions so that we know 
what kind of hourly rate we can offer this person. Right. So currently we're paying, like I said, the assistant clerk was at 2101 an hour. And I don't know if you want what you want to use for the bookkeeper position, because the one we really hired into that position was Mark. And that was at 25. How much did you pay uh, uh, the woman from Berlin? Oh, she was way down. She was like, I, I want to say she was eighteen dollars an hour or something like that. Who, that Patty? Was Patty. Oh my That's god! Eighteen or twenty dollars an hour. Right, Steve. If you had your hand up. Yes. <clears throat> well, I mean, I was doing some little figuring here before this, and I had already written down a range, and I'm I might be way off, but I had written down a range of twenty-one to twenty-six. So I, I mean, I don't know, but I mean. That's what Dorinda's looking for as a range. Can I say something? You know, yes. not a slight word number. So just looking at some research in uh, about affordable housing and Vermont wages, the average, uh, the average wage in Vermont is $30 per hour. That's not the median, that's the average. So uh, and a livable wage for a housing wage, which Liz can probably talk about, is $22.78 an hour. So I think... The question that you know, I would put, I would say that you want to, you don't want to pay somebody something where they would have to go on food stamps or where they'd have to. It's like a Walmart situation, you know, pay a lowball them so much they can't live. If this is going to be a full time job with benefits, then don't you probably have to get, you know, a livable wage that's not. Um, but Liz probably knows this is probably right up your alley, right? Yeah, but I mean, I'm just thinking more along the lines of we could think about it in terms of of yearly as well. So that $18 an hour that I mentioned is $37,000 a year plus benefits. Um, and, you know, so if we're looking at um, say 45,000 per year, which is kind of high, that's higher than Sarah makes. Like, I don't think this person should necessarily be making more than, or I don't know what you make Sarah, but it's also a 32 hour. I have, we have 32 hour week week jobs you know we're not working 40 hours a week oh you're doing 32 hours okay um i've already yeah. made i've already calculated if that'll help liz yeah um, what, did, what did you get so at 25 dollars an hour it would be forty one thousand six hundred dollars with benefits it would be fifty eight thousand a little over fifty eight thousand okay um and if it's at 28 dollars an hour it would be 46,592 for the regular wages and benefited, it would be 63,689.54. How much was that, 62? 63,689.54. And again, that's just guessing that the person would be taking a single health insurance plan and this would cover the HSA contributions and the Beamer contribution and of course taxes. Um, Here's what I, I'm, I'm just gonna throw, oh, hold on a second, Randy. I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out. Uh, you know, I think we should, I think we should say the range is from, is from 25, excuse me, 21 to 25 with benefits. Um, I'm fine with 26. I think if we start going up to 28 or 30, we're going to we're going to have a bigger problem because we're going to have to increase other other wages. We're just going to make it even more expensive. And. You know, that that's that's the range. And if that's if that sends people away, that sends people away. I, I don't want to. Uh, we can't screw up our whole town pay scale completely or we're going to be in real financial trouble. So I think that's a good place to start unless anybody disagrees. Randy, you had something you wanted to say. I was just going to, you basically just said what I was going to say. I mean, if, if Dave is down at the $21 mark, it seems like the 20 to $25 an hour range. Cause Dave was at the 21 mark, uh, the mark the bookkeeper mark there. I think you said his name was he's at 25 with no benefits. Um, you're falling right, right within the range of folks that you were paying. The only other consideration that I think about when I'm hiring folks is uh, 
the ability to offer them any kind of increases over time based on you know the the learning curve or whatnot um so you know hitting the top of the range when we're right. when we're looking at some something like that um oftentimes uh folks get disgruntled when they sit there and if you give them everything you can right up front and then they sit there forever without any kind of uh increase saying oh well i've learned this job so well now i'm i've been at it so anyway i i yeah. agree with the ranges that that peter and steve have have put mm -hmm. out and it seems appropriate given what folks have been being paid can i just ask for a point of clarification is this the range for the combined job we're talking about yes. not a bookkeeper yes. job yes okay. right yeah, I think that, you know, if we offered, I like what uh, Randy's saying, and I agree with it, you know, if we maybe offered, depending on the person, obviously, but 24 gives them right almost at 40,000 for 32 hour a week, if we offered 24 an hour. Well, that's going to be up to the ones that are hiring them and what they see their experience. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay. So yeah, their experience. We, and, we don't have to talk about 24. Yeah. No. Okay. I also like the idea of, of a six month probationary period um, with a, a, a review and then possibly a, uh, a bump um, if things are going well at that point. So that somebody comes in realizing there's, you know, there's a learning curve. And if they work toward it, there's there's some reward a few months down the road. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Wait, we forgot yeah, we to go know, to the fire department. It's not seven. Oh, we have a. Oh, not I thought it was six. We didn't. They said it's at seven and they wouldn't. Oh, meet. okay. Sorry, I thought it was six. That's a long way away. Calm down. Well, I know. Calm that's down. Why, that's why we asked Calm to go down. at seven. But we're having a good, hey, listen, for once, we have, for once, we have a chance to have a good productive discussion. And I think we have. I think we've, I think we've kind of beaten the horse to the ground for tonight as long as you're are you comfortable with those numbers to render and Sarah as a place to start yeah the person asked me she said i i think she said am i, am I just guessing that this is uh, this job pays the low 40s to maybe 50 and first i thought she was saying per hour and I'm like oh no. <laughs> no that's what she meant so i mean i think that that's what people are expecting if they're applying for this job mm. So well, low 40s is going to be a lot higher than to 50 is going to be a lot higher than 25 per hour. Right. right. And it's so, 32 hours and it's you can do it on the weekends sometimes if you want, as long as you've got certain hours in the office. I think it's also important to make thinking, sure right. I understand the value of the benefit package. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Stress amen. that to her. And she is at the right age. She's in her 40s. She's got a kid in elementary school, which is like yes you know somebody who might be long-term interested in 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 this town 26 gives you um forty-three thousand. Yeah. you already said that well, so, that's I'm that saying if she's you know if she's gonna be like oh no that's kind of too low well so we don't we don't know if we're gonna get other applicants yet or not i just yeah. think that we need to be prepared when these start coming in Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, if we, have to, if we if we get forced into changing this, we may have to change it. But we just have to understand that they're going to be uh, they're going to be other ramifications and costs more than just the uh, cost for this one person. Right. And I so, believe me, I agree with all the stuff about paying livable wages and and everything else. I just think, you know, I I agree with Phil a hundred percent. You know, and I've. I've been down this road so many times in my uh, in my business career. People do not value benefits. Once in a while, somebody does, but for the most part, everybody yeah, focuses on what their pay is. Yes, Sarah. I value, I value them too. I there do too. Go. There you go. So. So, guys, we actually only have we've used a lot of time. I got to get out, and close this at six forty-five, so I can get to the fire department. Okay. okay. Well, we need we need to. Uh, Give Victor his chance, and we've got a few other things we need to talk about quickly here. So, uh, Victor, Vic, can you you for Vic, can you turn the light on so we can see you? <laughs> it, is, it is on. Uh... 
That's the natural light, Vic. There's no light on your face. And I know you have a light on your face in your kitchen. Say, so, hey, let's end this discussion right now. And why don't you come over to my house and I'll show you. And then you won't have to bring this up. Okay? You're all, you got an open invitation, Mary. There you, you go. The issue. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's go, Victor. I don't have anything. If you don't want to talk about anything, we don't have to talk anything. Uh, the only thing I got to say is you got one more truck in the uh, hospital. No. Oh, no. Serious? Newest truck. Newest truck is in the hospital. Uh, I. Uh, it's it's got a inje uh, fuel fuel problem that uh, it's going to take some issues to to fix it. Yeah. Injector. No, no, no. I think it. Uh, I think it's uh, like the injection pump. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is a little yeah, bit more than one pump. injector, as you know, Steve. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But so, uh, it didn't go back to Freightliner. Uh, the warranty is just out on, on it. Of course it is. Uh, Bootsies. <laughs> Went to Bootsies and Barry. Yeah. So, so Victor, I know. Uh, I know we had a discussion. Shane was Shane was saying uh, I forget exactly when it was, but that we need to get our our ducks in a row and get this truck uh, that we need to buy next summer ordered up soon, real right. soon. Do you right. know where that stands? Um, we're just waiting for one last uh, uh, quote from the last guy that was in there, and then we'll be moving forward on that. Okay, Good. and. Uh, I have one comment, which is the the grader has been working on East Hill yesterday and today, I believe, and it mm -hmm. was my first chance to experience what that roller compactor gizmo can really do. Right. It makes a big difference, I think. A big yeah, difference. Good. Good. I'm glad. It's, you like it. it's going to be interesting to see how it holds up. We're going to get some rain in the next couple of days, but I think having the road compacted the way it is the effect of that rain is going to be way less than it has been on our newly graded roads in the past. So yeah, exactly. That's a great mind. Think along the same line. Shane said tonight, I know we're going to get some rain. I hope we don't get a hard driving rain. Um, we're hoping that that it comes out is like more of a soaking rain because those hard driving rains do bother the roads. No matter, no, no matter how good they are. Yeah. Right. Can I ask a quick question that pertains to the roads? What's yeah. the status on the Lafayette bill? We're still holding that second check. Uh, the status is the same as it was last time. So Shane promised me, I don't know, a week or two ago, that he was oh. going to make that call and settle that. So would you just oh, get okay. asking about that? We need to get that resolved. Yes, he did. He did make the call, and uh, Brent was going to Brent Tewksbury was going to call him back, but he hasn't. Hasn't called him back. Okay. Well, let's let's keep the problem. Glad he made the call. Let's keep the pressure. Let's keep the pressure on him. I mean, obviously, we're not paying the bill, but we need to get it resolved. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Uh, 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 like we like we said, you can blame the state if you want, but uh, the uh, for telling them that it's okay to do it if that actually did happen, I don't know. But uh, the state's not going to give us any money. No. no. And just, so we're going to end up paying it anyway. It's my suggestion right. that we we offer half in good faith, and we're not blaming anybody, but we're just saying it shouldn't be us paying the total cost of this. So, you know, if they're willing to. Great. Right. If they're not, then we, we've got to go forward from there, I guess, and make a decision. But um, they ought to be able, somebody in that organization ought to be able to look at this and make a decision. Well, I'm sure they will. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can see it both ways. If uh, they were told that everything was okay and uh, it wasn't, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to give up my money either if I was uh, doing that. Yeah. But, a uh, fifty-fifty is good. Go ahead, Steve. I, 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 I just think we should pay the bill. I, I, uh, I mean, that company is an extremely reputable company, and and I, 
I honestly believe if they were told to go ahead, I mean, they, they do stuff for the state all the time and they don't just go ahead and do work without being told. Uh, and I think it will, for that amount of money, I think that we should pay the bill and be done with it. That is my, my assessment. I cannot disagree with you. I don't disagree with you, Steve. Other board members? I think we should try the 50% offer. Liz? I I'm fine either way. I like the 50% 50 50 off or just pay the damn bill. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Probably pay the damn bill because we're just wasting time and money to try to figure it out. Since we've already made the phone call, my suggestion would be if everybody agrees that we wait till the next meeting and if there's no action by the next meeting, we just pay the damn bill. Okay. Yep, agree. Yep. <clears throat> Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Okay. But Anything Vic, else? Anything ask, else? Shane, ask Shane to get make another phone call. <coughs> right. I uh, will do that. Can I, can I just ask a point of clarification? Who is Shane call? Is he calling the state or is he calling is Brent Tewksbury of uh, the owner of FR Lafayette? Okay. So he's calling the owner of Lafayette, not the state. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if they you know, want they know and we know, they know and we know we're not going to get anything from the state. Okay. Sarah, Sarah, with no disrespect to Steve, that's what it used to be called, and that's what I could, but if you want yeah. Correct. It's highway specialties. Yes, I'm sorry. I know that. <laughs> I mean, Laf Lafayette is called highway specialties. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. You're deleting yourself there, Steve. <laughs> no, I know. I, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Anything else for the uh, highway department? No. Oh. All right. Thanks, Vic. All right. Thank you, Victor. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, approval of minutes of the September 8th, 21 regular select board meeting and the September 15th, 2021 special select board meeting. Is there a motion? Phil. Move. Move. <laughs> there you go, you got three moving. There you go. <laughs> Pick one, Sarah, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Liz. <laughs> that was very clear. Okay, all those favor, in favor of approving the minutes for September 8th and September 15th, please say aye. 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 Any and opposed? The and, and the, yeah, okay. Whoop. Aye. No. Yes. Wait I'll a minute. <laughs> Who I voted know. in favor of the motion? I did. Okay. Okay, did anybody vote against the motion? No, oh, so we've approved the minutes. Thank you. I just also like to tell you that all of you have been sent the NIMRIC contract. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Oh, okay. Um, Kurt Cut for Joe and Pauline Goslin at 74th North Bear Swamp. And you sent that to us, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, before we get, well, let, let's keep going. Correspondence, Sarah. Anything? No. Mm -mm. You basically the we made a plan to uh, we made a plan to sign the orders. I have uh, just one thing on the any other matters that may come before the select board, and I I feel like I'm uh, I'm sick of talking about this. But I want us to either fix and use and get trained and set up on the town email or spike the whole damn project. And I, I said this two weeks ago, I offered to help people. I didn't hear from anybody. Um, I know uh, Phil asked RB Technologies to help you, Mary. I don't know whether that ever happened. Yeah, she's on. I'm on. All set. Steve's on. And Steve Steve's is on. on. Yeah, so everybody's the on. only person who I believe has an issue is you, Liz. Is that correct? Well, I have it on my phone, and I don't have it anyplace else. Yeah, but if you if you go into 
whatever it is, rockspace.apps, whatever it is, just type that into your computer and put in your username. Well, I did. I tried it to hook it up to like um, Outlook or something. Uh And I just didn't, and I might have something to do with my work and maybe I shouldn't be combining the two, but it's actually combined on my phone. And so it's a little bit, I just haven't tried. I do, I, I would like it on my what I'd really like it is to show up on my Gmail. Is that a possibility or no? Yes. Okay. So you want me to have Holland call you? Yeah. Have Holland call you. That's what he walked yeah. Mary through. He walked okay, me. If it, if it can get... go show up in my Gmail, that would be great. That's exactly what mine does. Mine shows up okay. in my Gmail. It says, you know, it brings everything up on both of my. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, so, are we, so are we good to move forward with it using that new email? Yeah. Are you okay, Liz? If, even though yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, Sarah and Dorinda and everyone else, we are now going to communicate using our new emails, and it behooves all of us to check them and pay attention. Well, I do. I just didn't stop doing it because you guys asked me to. You said start yep. sending it to other emails. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, underst- I understand, but. We've got to. Uh, yeah. We need to cross the river and get in the new world. We've been yeah. we've been fiddling around with this for a long time. Could I ask somebody to? Can I just make somebody uh, the control for this meeting so that I can close my computer and go to the fire department without losing everybody? The host. Well, I think we're I think we're ready to adjourn this. Uh, Recess. What I'm saying is that if I close my computer. No, no, we're we're adjourn we're adjourning the select board meeting. Right, we're going to participate in the. Fire department. You can't. Can. No, it's all. <laughs> it's all a select board meeting. Okay. All, all right. select board meeting. So when we leave, when we leave the fire department, then we are adjourning the select board meeting, and they are convening their meeting. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will explain that to them when we start. Well, the way I viewed it okay, is well, that well, we're bringing the select board meeting there, to sir, them. Just so they understand what's going on. Okay, well, wish me luck. So I guess what I'm saying is, can I appoint somebody a host so that I don't accidentally close everybody out of the meeting? You can do me. You can do me. You can do me. Okay. Hey, Phil. Can I ask you about the email now? Me? Yeah. I I (laughs) grabbed it. You're now host. Goodbye, guys. See you later. I just have a question, though. It, okay. it, it, it's like I, I see the instructions, but that's for like the original before I had a password and stuff. So right. um, now that I have a password and everything, I use my regular password, right? To yep. set it up under. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then if you go into apps. Recording space, you'll. Um, you can find various help menus for setting it up with different clients. But I think it's probably just as easy for the sake of a little bit of time to have me have Holland just call you and walk you through it. It's probably just faster. (coughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have a good joke? Good story? Um. Well, we'll find out how fast Sarah drives. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. That sounds like I've got mine. I wish it was something else, but it's coffee. Yeah, yeah. I'm on water. Let's hope we get let's hope we get some good candidates for these positions. I'm just I cross my toes every night. I mean the other thing I can do is just set it up as a um well I'd rather have it go to my, my Gmail. I could just set it up as on my browser as a regular thing I check, but I know I won't check it. Well see that's that's the way I have it set up. It's on my browser. So when I when I go in there, it pops up right in front of me, and it's right next to my my uh, link for my Gmail. So I click on one, and then I click on the other. But anyway, I love having them together because they all come in just as if they were all Gmails. 
Right. Yeah, that's what I want. My problem is, <laughs> my problem is I, still get an, I still get an overwhelming amount of email and it just, uh, I, 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 have, I struggle searching for, for stuff in the morass of all the email. But anyway, that's my personal problem. <laughs> I've got my finger in too many pies. Is that cute child we're looking at, Phil? Oh, he's getting himself a cup of coffee. Oh, he's a grandkid. Yeah, oh, I imagine. Yeah, it's his daughter's, it's his daughter's kid. Yeah. yeah, little baby girl. So I have, a, I have a question which has nothing to do with any town business at all, but I'd be interested to see what people think. So I've been trying to figure out when and if I should get my third Pfizer shot <laughs> and figure out what the timing needs to be between my senior flu shot and my third Pfizer shot. And I can't give anybody, my doctor won't give me a straight answer. The health department, their website won't give me a straight answer. I can't seem to get a straight answer from the pharmacy. I'm frustrated. Well, um, you, you're not supposed to get your booster until eight months after you had your shots. Well, so, I'm eight months. I'm eight months past, and I'm 75 years old, and I have diabetes. Where does that put me? That puts you in getting a booster. But I, you might, like, I didn't have my first booster till February, and then the second in March. So I'm not ready until November. So if I were you, like flu shot right away. Yeah, Peter, you can ride down. You can go any day. Well, that's what I, that's what I hear, but. When you go on, I, I mean, you know, I tried to talk to the uh, to the pharmacist at Kinney. I waited, I waited on hold for thirty minutes, and she never picked up. Um, but you know, when you go on the Kinney or the CVS website, they don't say that. But I've had people tell me they just walk into CVS and get the shot. So I don't know. A second, are they going in to get the booster shot now? Yes. Yeah. Wow. My sister has uh, got her third shot. She got it in Florida. But. So I was told by Rite Aid or Walgreens that they are doing booster shots, but you have to be considered um, someone who is uh, immunocompromised. So you might be taking a med and you have to be taking a specific medication. So they have these questions that they ask you to see if you're really immunocompromised or you're just trying to sneak in. Um, and so you, there are certain diseases or um, medications. Like I said, oh, well, my father's 87 and he only has one kidney and it's, you know, considered severe kidney damage. Well, does he take a medication that makes him immunocompromised? And I said, no. So they said he's not eligible. See, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. So, but they also said they're not that, you could probably walk in and say, yes, I do. They're not checking anything. But so, it's probably not the nice thing to do. But if you were a Pfizer person, it's just a matter of days before you're going to have access to it anyway. Uh, I heard it on the radio. Yeah, They're saying it like tomorrow to wait, or something. supposed to wait 28 or 30 days between getting the, the regular flu shot and getting another COVID shot or vice versa? That's correct. That's what I would call. Yeah. Which one That's are you? Heard. Which one are you supposed to get first? I think it's like calling the health department and asking them what to do if uh, well, you, Peter, know, or you do have uh, COVID and what you should do. If you talk to 10 people, you get 10 different answers. I will tell you, I don't have any uh, immune compromise or anything. And I have a, an appointment on the 23rd of November to get my third one. So I don't. I guess so did anybody by any chance listen to the governor's press conference today at noon? I was not able to listen. I was going to try and listen to see what he had. It was very boring. It was very, very boring. I did so no, no good information from the press conference. No. No. So, Victor, if you wait 30 days, should you get the flu shot first or the COVID shot first? The COVID shot first. 
Yeah, the 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 booster. Yeah, I'll probably get that first. I mean, I haven't even signed out. I haven't asked my doctor about the uh, if I'm supposed to get the regular flu shot uh, or not. Or if I should get it before or after. I haven't asked them, so I haven't solved that problem. So why are you taking an appointment? Your flu shot if you're old enough. Why are you making an appointment to get the booster shot if you said you could just walk in and get it? I didn't say that. Oh, I thought you said you have an appointment on the 23rd to get the booster shot. I do. But why do you have to... In November. But why do you have to make an appointment if you could go in tomorrow and get it? Because my eight months is enough. I gotcha. All right. That's all. That's all. Sorry for not being clear. Well, if all of us are having a hard time figuring this out, imagine what's going on with the rest of the population. How would you like to be in a third world country? Yeah, amen. Although every day I wonder if we're becoming a third world country, but that's a whole different subject. <laughs> that's not one we want to get in before we start talking to the fire department, that's for sure. Oh. Oh, well, when I get a good night's sleep and I'm on top of my game, I think things are pretty good. When I get tired and frazzled, I get discouraged and I think, oh my God, what's, what's happening? So do we, do we want to discuss Steve's proposal at this meeting? Because Steve had put together that proposal with a decision to be made in the middle of August. I don't know if Steve's still on. I'm here. He is. Well, I think, and and we're you know the meetings recess, so we shouldn't be. We really shouldn't be talking about this. But no, I no. I'm saying, should we discuss it with the fire department when we're back on the record? Yes, and I think I think we have potentially an an alternate proposal to suggest, but I don't want to talk about it until yeah. we got everybody we got everybody on. All I'm saying is that um, I don't know what we're going to hear that's going to show let's not please let's not, let's not talk about this until they're on the call or on the zoom is it middlesexvermont.org yes yes and you, spell vermont, you, you smell you spell vermont out it's not vt right That's a big cup of coffee. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's a whole lot of caffeine late at night. No, it's decaf. <laughs> you slip a little a little B and B in and a couple of shots of B and B, it improves it dramatically. Oh, I know. I wish. <laughs> That's after the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I already poured it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all for hanging around for this. I, I appreciate it. I think it's important for all of us to be involved in that. Sure. It's a lot easier than having to physically go to either place. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an interesting question. And this, you know, this, this gets back to, to other stuff as well. But I mean, I understand if the fire department's doing training, they have to do that in person. But Shouldn't they be? Shouldn't they be zooming their meetings as well? If we are, and other town entities are, but of course they're not part of the town. So, who knows? So, Liz, are you working on that right now? The email? No, I gave up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna email uh, put a trouble ticket in right now. Um, okay. uh, when when do you want me to have him call you and which number? Uh, he can call my cell at eight zero two two seven nine one seven one one. Okay. And then uh, let me look at my calendar. Um, I mean, do you think he'd call tomorrow or it would be like a while? It might be a couple of days. He's been, okay. they've been pretty busy. I think they're like everybody else. They don't have 
Okay. Adequate staffing right now. Well, you know, I actually have a vacation day on Friday. I'm not doing anything. So he could call me anytime on Friday. Oh. And on Thursday, it looks like he could call me, you know, anytime after 10 o'clock. I just have. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'll leave it with Friday. There's more likely that that okay. might happen. So, okay. Set a time, Liz. I mean, I, I, I set a time of 11. He called me a few minutes before 11. It was really nice to have that time to know oh. to be available. Yeah, tell him how about, um, yeah, 10 or something. 10-ish? Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in my calendar. His name is Holland. Yeah, H-O-L-L-E-N-D. Yeah. From really? Yeah. He's a nice guy and he's um, very he's patient. Oh, so good. He's from <laughs> RB Technology. Right. Not um, at Rackspace. Okay, from RB Technology. Okay. Is RB Technology, is that the one that was out on uh, Main Street and Barry forever, Phil? Um, no. 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 It was below them. They're in East Mount Pillar now, but I don't know. I don't think they were ever, ever have been in Barry to my knowledge. Peter might know. He's. Yeah. No, they were, they worked out of, they was out of Ruben's house for a long time, which is right next oh, okay. to where they are now. They're now in the old, uh, the old airplane hangar. So right. weird that that was an airport up there at one time. There used right. to be a computer shop that uh, started up doing like computer repair type stuff for forever that was by the uh paramount movie theater in they in the same they building a long and time. I, they, yeah they i they, i could have sworn their name was Darby technologies or something to that effect but it might not be the same place slightly very yeah. uh, I, so. I don't think so randy only because uh noel johnson did and still does business with uh with rb and we were in and the in at almost the very beginning. So anyway, but I could be wrong. I mean, there might, who knows, but uh, I don't think so. Is that what you did, Peter? You worked for Noyle? I was Noyle. I was Noyle a second. Ah. <laughs> yeah, 44 years, Randy. I was Carol Air. Carol Air was my partner and then Tim and then a couple of other people became uh, minority owners along the way, but yes. When we when I started out there in 1974 or three, we had three people working, three staff people working full time and two principals and our total payroll was under $90,000. <laughs> Sir. A long way five since years. That. that was five years before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> that make you that make you feel old, Peter? I don't need that to make me feel old, Randy. <laughs> you should see me crawl out of bed in the morning and go for my Tylenol bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Hey, Peter, when did Tim Noise? Uh, Tim Noise. Uh, um, when did Tim join? Tim here. Tim so, here. Yeah, thanks. So I'm just, I mean, a long, long time ago, he was, he was basically almost right out of college. Yeah. So, you know, 35 years ago or something like that. So he's the senior member now. Yes. And Sean and David are the other two. They're the up and they're the up and comers. Yeah. So I sold, I sold, I sold my stock to them. And now it's time for, uh, I have I have one more nice check coming to me in the spring, and then they're all done with me, and they've got to start buying Tim out. But so far, our internal perpetuation scheme has worked. It worked for me, and hopefully, it'll work for him. It's a tough it's a tough thing to uh, it's a tough thing to do. I can tell you, we did it for Noyle. <coughs> But now I believe now I believe they have uh, almost sixty employees, so it's quite a quite an operation.
taken me a long time to say they, not we. <laughs> Hard to let go when you're when you put so much into something like that, you know. Well, it was it was it was hard for me. I, uh, you know, you spend you spend, in my case, most of my working life, all but a couple of years, building that business, and then you got to figure out how to pass it on to somebody else. It's a real shifting of gears. But anyway, it's. You know, it's great to do if you can do it. It was a wonderful opportunity. Noel, Noel promised me when I went to work for him, basically, I worked for Aetna for two years in uh, in Burlington. But other than that, I was right out of the service. And Noel said to me, if this all works out, you'll have an op- opportunity to be the owner of the business. And, and he lived up to his uh, he lived up to his promise and it all worked. So pretty good opportunity for somebody from Princeton, New Jersey, who had experience in radar repair and a history degree in college. Doesn't quite line up, does it? <laughs> nope. Nope. Although, you know, like everything else, the, the skills you learn along the way are all applicable. I mean, getting along, I always, I always say my three years in the army was my graduate school, learning, learning how to muddle my way through the army and get along with people and, and survive was a pretty good education for me. I can tell you all different kinds of people. So somebody must have a joke or a story. Come on. Uh, we're, be, we're being recorded by Orca, by the way, you know. <laughs> oh, she didn't stop the recording. Well, we better make you it a quick story then. You can't you can't <laughs> stop Orca. I stopped the town's recording, but I didn't stop. I can't stop Orca. Oh, no, that's all right. So you gotta be careful what you tell for jokes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. We should be careful anyway. Yes. Well, Here's not a joke. I cannot figure out how to cancel my son's health insurance at Northeastern. They make it so hard to waive it. Like, I can't find it anywhere. Call them up. That's what you'll be doing all day Friday, Liz, is sitting on the phone <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> there goes your day off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they tell us when the deadline is. They don't say, waive it here with the link. I've done it before, but I just can't find it anywhere. They suck you for every penny they can get out of you. That's a common complaint. Hey, here she is. It's on. He's there. Yeah. Oh. Sarah just went out to get her phone. Okay, okay. thanks. Because she couldn't connect. But I oh. guess she connected. You got it connected? Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, we didn't touch a thing. It just turned on. She probably didn't let it start up long enough. Yeah. Well, no, she'll be right back. Yeah. I was going up with a 450 service trooper, right? And, uh, I've never, uh, you know, Greg. Did you get it? And, uh, yeah, I did. I did it. I, How'd you do it? I didn't touch a thing. All of a sudden, they were talking at me. <laughs> you guys, we have a, right up. We have spotty internet connection. So, do you want me to remain host, or do you want it back? Well, well, I'm going to be taking minutes the like old-fashioned way. Okay. Well, I don't think anybody else is going to come on, so I'll just. Stay as host. I gotta start the recording again, though. Let's see. Or is it? Uh, do you want me? Do you want to make me host? You can make me host. I don't mind. It's okay. Well, if it's a shaky internet. Oh, you, you've gone back. I think you are host already. What really? Yeah. Recording well, in progress. Is. There I am. Yeah, you are host. So there you hey. go. Good enough. Can you okay, guys well, see? Let's, let's hope this. Uh, Let's hope this works. So, is everybody is everybody there who's going to be there? Jeff and, Jeff and uh, Doug are in a meeting right now. Oh, okay. All right. 
Okay. We'll wait a couple of minutes. Change. I'm going to just do it like this. I don't know how to do it. There. Can you guys see stuff? Yes. yes. Okay. Everything you said last year, and then this year we were supposed to learn different things. Basic information. Yeah, just up beyond. You might want to mute them until they're ready to start. Thank you. Is there something else I can help with? Okay, here we go. So good evening. Um, I did up a summary like I did last month and added a few more details. Um, where our call volume. Hey, hey, Jeff, can you hope, can you just hold on for one second? Sure. So um, I just want to be clear that as much as this feels like your meeting, the first part of this meeting is still actually a select board meeting. Okay. Not that it matters, but that's the, that's the way it needs to work. So what I envision is, and hopefully this this works for all of you, is we'll have our our discussion with you and hear what. Uh, and hear what you have to say, and we we may have some comments or some reaction to that. But then we're going to adjourn the select board meeting. We will withdraw, and you can continue your fire department meeting. Does that work? Yeah. So so that said, we have with us um, we have the select board. We have Randy Drury. We have Vic Dwyer, and we have Dorinda the treasurer with us. And it would be helpful if you could say who you have there. Uh, so far we have uh, Doug Hanson, the chief, myself, Eric Mativier, the uh, captain. People are still, our uh, other captain just came in, secretary just came in. Um, so that's uh, Robert Catchpaw and Jess Catchpaw and one of our juniors. Robert Jr. Catchpaw. We have Arch Bauer, who's head of the uh, FAST squad. We have um, Steven with us. And where's Jamie? Do you know? Oh, there you are. Um, so we have, a, we have a, and then we have uh, Scott with us as well. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so go ahead with, go ahead with your report. Thank you. Right. So total for the year, we're up to 43 calls. Uh, over the last month since we last met, we've had 10 calls. We've had uh, two mutual aid outs, no mutual aid ins. The max number of uh, members that have responded have been 12. The minimum number were three for an average of 6.7 people per call. Uh, engine one has been out seven times, engine six, three times, tanker one, four times and the rescue has been out seven times. The calls that we've gone to are a vehicle fire, fire on 89 that ended up not being a call. It was a blown turbo charger. Um, we had a fire alarm at Red Hen, which ended up being a false alarm. Uh, there was a structure fire in Berlin that we responded to with a tanker for mutual aid. We had a vehicle versus bear up on 89. Um, they apparently had been sitting there for a while and some passerby apparently had called. Uh, we ended up being canceled before we could respond. Um, there was a missing, missing person search um, and VSP was the director of that. And 50 at the intersection of route two 100B, which is a fatal accident. Uh, the structure fire at Camp Mead, uh, one of the buildings there right behind Red Hen. Um, it was in, we think it was with that um, lightning storm that we had some real close hits and, and it was probably a, a uh, there was a more. Um, and then there was nine. 
Um, the guy that we talked about last month um, was turned out being dead. It would cost too much to repair it versus buying a new one. So we purchased a new, we used $499 in the end committee. And then the remaining $195.45 was from out of our donation fundraising funds. Uh, the chainsaw that we had is waiting parts um, and parts delivery is slow. Um, we're looking at the possibility of voting someone on the department tonight. There'll be discussion on that. Training for this month was basic life support CPR. So that's uh, above just uh, the average citizen CPR. Uh, we finished, everyone finished that um, at the beginning of the month. Any questions on? So, I, I mean, I guess the I guess the question is: So, how are you doing in your uh, in your recruiting efforts? How many members do you have at this point in time? Uh, Thirteen. So we're up three. Yep, which is great. Yep. Any questions, other uh, other board members? Are there any of the new recruits who are in town all day? Uh, the, one of the ones uh, uh, is works in town and, and she can leave and she works over on on the, the school side of the town so she can leave um, during the day if she has to for a call. So that ups our Annie on, on uh, in, in town daytime responders. So Jeff, do you all the figures you gave us? Do you have those written down? You could give those to Sarah so we could all get a copy. Yeah, I can send her that. That'd be great because I started taking notes, but you talk too fast for me to get it all. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. It's just there's a lot of information in there. Anybody else have anything? Board members. So um, I've been giving a lot of thought to our uh, process and where we're uh, and where we're going with this, and and uh, I very much appreciate the uh, the effort you guys have been making over the summer. Originally, originally we said we were going to make some kind of decision about how we were going to go forward uh, by September first, and obviously that date has. Uh, has come and gone. And at the same time, uh, I think overall we're, we're pleased with the, with the progress you guys are making. Um, that said though, um, we still have the uh, elephant in the room question hanging out there about how we, would, how we should proceed going forward from an organizational point of view, the issue being um, should the fire department continue to be uh, an independent nonprofit fully fully funded by the town or should it should it morph into in fact a a town uh, fire department and uh, in thinking about this and how we should and how we should go forward and this is not not decided at this point in time but I wanted to talk about it and and uh, the other select board members haven't haven't heard this either but in uh, in thinking about it, my recommendation is, in thought is, that we keep we keep going forward the way we are uh, through the fall, and then make a decision as to whether uh, we put this to a town vote on town meeting day, rather than have the select board make that decision. And I don't know how other board members feel about that. But the more I thought about it, I was uncomfortable having it be. Uh, solely a select board decision. It seems like it's serious enough and a big deal enough that the whole community should be involved in making that decision if, in fact, uh, we go forward with that, with that step. But I wanted to let you know that and also let you hear uh, the reaction, if any, from uh, select board members about that thought. Steve? Yeah, Peter, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that 
all of the information that I put together in that proposal, if you will, or whatever, it was a plan. And, and those dates uh, were arbitrary, arbitrary for me and trying to do it in, in a manner. But I just wanted to put that out there that, that those dates aren't just hard and fast. But I think the plan of going back to what you just said, I think that's a good idea that if we move forward with this, that it goes to a townwide vote. I have a question, Peter. Yes, Lord. so how how does this um, how does this address whether or not they remain their own entity or they, they fall under the town? How does this address the issue around um, paint like mutual aid with? with other towns. So the, I get the feeling the other towns want us to come up with something that somehow supports them more. And whether or not we take over the fire department, not take over, but whether they fall under us or they are themselves, what's going to change that prevents us from having to pay Waterbury and Montpelier for their services? The How will is, that affect it? Right. So the answer is the only way it will affect it that I see is that the town will be more involved on a high level in the fire department and communicating with other and potentially communicating with other other towns and organizations. The fire department, whether it is a municipal fire department or an independent uh organization the way it is today they're taking the steps they need to do to do that by recruiting right. new members and, and building up the fire department um that is gonna that is going to uh resolve that we've already yes. uh, uh had some uh, positive comments from waterbury in particular about the progress they've seen already so you know it, it doesn't we we are not it is it is not the intent of any of this that we are going to meddle in the affairs of the fire department on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what I'm more concerned about in this is that we all work together and we assist the fire department any way we can in meeting their goals and objectives. And at the same time, they work and cooperate with us in terms of meeting the, the town goals and objectives, which are basically to provide good fire service and fast squad service to the residents of our town, but also support the surrounding community as they support us. It's not, you know, there's nothing, we're not gonna be, I mean, I would like to think we will continue having on some basis uh, joint meetings, because I think it's important to, uh, to communicate back and forth no matter, uh, no matter how we go forward. And at the end of the day, if we get to December, and we're very comfortable with the way things are going, and it's the sense of the select board that we should continue the way we are, then we continue the way we are. On the other hand, if, uh, if it seems like a good idea to put the question to a town vote, then we can go ahead and do that. I'm not saying we're making the decision tonight to do that. I'm saying that's what I see as the, as the process. But again, I've, I've heard from Steve, I haven't heard from, uh, anybody else on the board and I haven't heard anything from the fire department. Another thought too is, and maybe this is something we can ask Grace when she comes from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I wonder if there's any benefit to the fire department being under our, you know, as a municipal fire department in case maybe some of those ARPA funds could be used for things like the air tanks, right? Um, if that falls into some sort of, you know, COVID need or, or whatever. And then, you know, that would be an, that would be a reason why we'd actually want to do that. Or are there some funding opportunities that make sense for the fire department to be under the municipal umbrella? I think the answer to, to both those questions is potentially yes, although it's hard to, uh, it's hard to quantify that, but that's exactly you know, that's exactly the kind of cooperation and, and help that we can provide. But more than anything else, I think the important thing is, is good communication back and forth, which we haven't 
historically had necessarily, and there've been bad feelings on uh, bad feelings on both sides about that. And I'm hoping these meetings ten, tend to improve that. I mean, I, I very much want to know uh, how the fire department is is feeling. I, I hope they're they're proud of what they've accomplished already. Um, I'm I'm glad to hear. I mean. Three three people makes it make a big difference on a small department, and especially uh, especially people in town. And you know, it sounds like the training is better organized than it was, which which I very much appreciate. Um, I think that's important, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we're not going to become uh, the select board is not going to become firemen, except for maybe you, Liz. You've already taken the first step. Yeah, no, we can sign you up for a six-month so, so course. Select Liz. board members, I'm, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. We can sign Liz up for a six-month firefighter one course. <laughs> I just have one more question. Yep. You just Good. froze, Liz. Um, so, I can my board, you know, Montpelier, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay that Montpelier is going to, like what's going to be good enough for them? What in terms um, of- is having had, having had conversations with, with both communities, what they want to see is progress. I mean, they know we're a small town and we're going to have a small fire department and we're not going to have, you know, unbelievable equipment and this and that, but they want to feel like that we can be as reliable as we can be first responders in our own community and be able to support them when they need us. They're not, there's no, there's no secret, uh, there's no secret formula, I don't believe. Well, it's and probably going to be the former that they're going to want to see us responding because it doesn't sound like they call much for help anyway. Is that right, Jeff? Jeff, Jeff would like to be recognized. Yes, Jeff. So first off, Montpelier is most likely not going to call us unless we become union firefighters. That's right. just the way they're operating under the current administration. Uh, previous to this administration, they would call us quite frequently. So their, their main plan is to call Barry City for any structure fires that they have. So until gotcha. they see that we're somewhere at that level, which realistically we're not going to have five or ten um union firefighters in this department at least not in the next five to ten years so um the 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 proof i think the proof's in the pudding since this summer the structure fires we've had we've not needed to call them in fact we haven't called them since the church fire um and we are going out of town significantly more than we're calling for mutual aid in. Um, I think that that in itself shows that other towns are very happy to call us and realize what we can bring to the fire or the table as it may be um, when they need assistance and they're, they're not hesitating to call us. So uh, Montpelier is, I don't see any change in Montpelier's hesitation to call us, quite frankly, no matter what we do. Uh, we did invite them to the training we had, and no one cared to show up. Yep. I, th I think you're probably right about that. I mean, what, 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 what both Waterbury and Montpelier were concerned about is, and never say never, but on a regular basis, they don't want to be the first responders in our town. And uh, for this year, and, and as it shows this year, they are not, except for the... Right. Correct. The Correct. So... You know, I think we're I I think we're on a good uh, on a good path. I just think uh, you know we all need to be thinking about um, the opportunities and issues with regard to this reorganization concept. The other thing I want to be clear about is, in my mind at least, this does not prevent the the nonprofit entity continuing to exist in. In Waterbury, as much as it's a Waterbury town fire department, they have a nonprofit entity which is part of their part of their fire department, and they use that for various uh, for various activities. So, um, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know how that work could work. We could think about it. So I, I would really like to hear, uh, I would really, and I know I realize I'm, uh, I'm kind of springing this on everybody at the same time, but I, I thought it was important to, uh, to bring it up and at least talk about it. So, so Mary and Phil, I'd love to hear what you think about this. I think it's worth, uh, it's worth considering, but if we're going to take a vote, uh, we're going to have a town vote. Voters really need a lot more information than we have now. And if we're going to wait and to do that until December, I don't know if we can get the information together that we need. Well, and uh, I think we need to, I think as, as we go forward here, we need to work on that. I mean, certainly, certainly, uh, they're going to they're going to need to understand exactly how it how it could work and what it would be and what the benefits what the what the positives are and what the negatives are both from the point of view of the of the town and the and the fire department but i just like the idea what i am what i am reticent to do is have a select board meeting on some rainy night in november and make this decision i think that's the wrong way to go um so you know, if it's a town-wide vote, yes. I mean, the, the town needs to be uh, the town needs to be informed, well informed, and some people will pay attention and some people won't. But right now, I'm sure if you polled people in town and asked them uh, if they knew the discussion that was going on with the fire department, they would say they have no idea. So, well, I'm confused about what you're say what what you and. Um... Uh, Jeff, who said about Montpelier, Jeff says they won't call us because we don't have union. Well, uh, we don't have union firefighters. You tell me that um, that the city manager is calling you and putting a squeeze on you to make a decision on whether we're, you know what we're going to do to beef up our fire department. And um, they are not. They are. I, I. I would. I would just amend what you're saying to say. You know, it was a concern, not a not a squeeze. Well, I I and didn't come. I couldn't come up quite with the right way I wanted to say it. I just wanted to say you told me they've been pressing you uh, to make a decision. Well, and, I, well, no, they haven't been pressing me to make a decision. They've been pressing us and the fire department to show progress so that they don't feel like they have to be the first responder. Right to events that occur in our town. That was their concern. We, they okay. said, we are always willing to help. We're gonna provide mutual aid when you need it. That's not an issue. We right. just don't wanna be the first responders. Right. That was where yeah. the concern came from. So and have yeah, you raised with, with Bill Frazier, the fact that the, the issue that Jeff has raised that, that, uh, that they won't call us because we don't have union members? I don't think that's a concern. The, their concern was more that exactly what Jeff is doing. I mean, they're recruiting people, they're, they're training more, they're doing, I mean, Jeff is doing all the right stuff right now. That's what the Montpelier wants. I just wondered whether or not, you, you know, you're kind of talking on two different planes, that's all. Because I thought that they said that we didn't respond to mutual aid too, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyway, have you discussed that with Bill Frazier? I have not had a discussion with him recently. I had a discussion with him about six weeks ago and mm. I owe him a phone call, but I was waiting. I was waiting to get through uh, tonight's meeting before, uh, before I called him, but I will call him. And I will also uh, either, either Steve or I will talk to, uh, to Gary. I think Steve has already talked to Gary. Who is, uh, you mean the Waterbury, the person? The, the yes, per Waterbury, yes. Okay. So anything else, Phil, what are you, what are you thinking about this? Is Phil still there? Steve Phil anymore. I think Phil, Phil just Phil. got dropped to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, for a while, Steve was off too. Yeah. Did you have to back in? No, it just, it, apparently everybody's using the internet and it just dropped me out and then it let me back in all on its own. So any, any questions about any of this from the, uh, from the fire department while you've got us? So I, I would, 
I would say right now our, our morale is very high with the, what we're doing and the calls we're going on both in town and out of town. <laughs> and I think we're uh, showing uh, the towns that we're questioning our commitment. We're showing them that we, we are committed. Yes, we're small, but we're, I mean, as you know, it's hard to get people to join the fire department. It's hard to get people to sign up for government jobs. Right. Um, so we're doing our best in getting new people when we, when we have them. We're, like I said, morale is high with what we're doing. Um, I think the, while we're not doing it for the money, I think the increase in pay has shown um, an increase in, uh, in, in responses. Um, just makes it easier, a little bit easier. Uh, of course, nobody will see that until December, but just knowing yep. that you're getting paid more than 250 an hour. Right. Um, is is helpful remind yeah. me again did you raise it from 100 to 300 is that right or am i wrong about the for each time they appear ten dollars an hour or part thereof so if you're out for 55 minutes you get ten dollars if you're out for an hour and 10, 10 minutes you get twenty dollars i thought there was a stipend too you don't have the stipend anymore that's change that's what the stipend rates are going Sorry. to okay gotcha so that they're they're per hour. Yeah, I remember that. So Jeff, what do you think about this proposal to have the town? Well, personally, I I, I like the way things are being run right now. Um, I think we're doing a good job as far as budgets. I mean, we bring you our budget. We sh you see every time we're spending stuff. And the only thing that we really have any um, slush to play with is equipment purchases. And that's about $3,000 on a line item for our, our total budget. Uh, the rest of the budget, be it what we submit as an operational budget versus the total, what the town, what you all put in our budget to a hundred and whatever thousand, uh, very little of that is at our discretion to do any any spending with. So it's, it's really um, from that aspect, I think you have as much control over it now as if there were any changes being made. So I don't really see the need for a change. I, other than I think the, the meetings, whether we continue one month, we come there and one month you come here, or we come there every other month to give you an update on, on our, what's been going on. Um, but I think it's, it's a lot better that we're talking to each other because yes, that has been a difficult situation uh, in the entire 17 years I've been on the department. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to continue these, uh, continue these meetings. I think they're, I think they're valuable. I think, you know, you guys can, can learn a little bit about what we're thinking and why we're thinking the way we are. And we can, we can do the same. Uh, we can do the same on the other side. So, I appreciate your, uh, all of your time and attention. And Bill's back. Yes, I see him. He's looking, he's looking as handsome as ever, too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, my, my computer died. <laughs> yeah. I had to go wrestle up the court. Any, anybody else on the fire department have any other concerns or anything they'd like to say? While, we've, while you've got us here? Anyone? Any chance? No, they're all they're all shaking their heads. No, they enjoyed listening to what you all had to say. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone, for your service. Yeah. Mark, I thought you had time from our um, fast squad. Oh. No. So <laughs> these guys have a meeting, you know. No. Well, I, didn't, I didn't you want to get Phil's opinion as well while you had all the select board with us? Yes. Yeah. So, so Phil, now that you're back, I was just kind of polling the board members as to what they were thinking about this uh, this idea, and I realize it's uh, it's all brand new, and you haven't had any chance to think about it. But does that approach make sense to you? It does. I, yeah, I like that idea that you know we continue on as we are, um, continuing to communicate, take a little a little bit more time to um, decide the best way to move forward with this. And I, I agree, Peter, I think um, a vote um, 
of the town to uh, finally, you know, make a decision about this is probably the way to go. I, I think there's actually a number of people in town who don't realize that the fire department is uh, a nonprofit. Um, they, they don't understand that it's not under. Uh, oh, I'm sure government. the majority of people in town don't understand that. that. Could be, it could be the majority, but uh, anyway, at least a few people that I've spoken to over the summer have said, well, I, I, I didn't know that was true. So, um, you know, they were rather confused about it. But yeah, I like this approach, Peter. I think uh, that's a good way to good way to move forward. Okay, thank you. So uh, with that, unless anybody has anything else, um, I would suggest we adjourn the select board meeting and the fire department. You can get on with your uh, regular meeting and we would expect you to come uh, uh, be part of our meeting. When, Sarah, when would that be? Okay, well, that's going to be the very, very busy meeting of uh, October 19th. Oh, and that's when we're starting the budget? That's when you're going to... Oh, so yeah, that visit to Dolan Road. Uh, the uh, CBRP uh, person is coming to uh, talk about ARPA funds. And you're starting the budget. You can't possibly have your budget ready by the 19th, can you, of October? No. They can't have the budget ready by the 19th of October. No. Well, let's let's plan to have a let's plan to have a uh, short meeting with the fire department then. I just I just want to if we start postponing these meetings, we'll stop having them and I don't want to have that happen. Okay, so the next meeting with the fire department is going to be the 19th of October. Does that yeah. work for you guys? Yeah. Okay, that works for them. And then our next meeting, our next meeting at the fire department would be when I don't know. I don't my no. calendar. I'm sitting here. November. November. All right. Well, we can cross that. We can cross that bridge November at another 16th. time. November 16th. So, okay. So uh, thank you everyone for participating. And I am going to adjourn the select board meeting and leave the fire department to your business. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. What? When, when it gets closer to the